Good day everyone, this is engineer Algen Michael G. Sabak and I welcome you to our second module discussion and our ninth session about earth science. In our last discussion we introduced the concept of earth materials. We talked briefly about where they come from originally, in the sense that they form from atoms that were once nebula out in space. And then we had turned our attention specifically to minerals, which are the building blocks of rocks, and therefore of our planet. We considered what the definition of a mineral was and we looked at the internal structure of a mineral. Now we're going to look at the rocks themselves. We're going to broaden our viewpoint and consider all the different kinds of materials we call rock on this planet. We're going to realize that there are three fundamentally different kinds of rocks. You may already know this from an earlier subject or from even a kindergarten class because it's common knowledge. But we're going to try to understand, in a little more detail, what makes these different groups distinctive. Today, we will be familiarizing the rock cycle, review and investigate the three types of rocks according to its properties, processes, formations, classification and identification. Where do you actually see a rock? Well, in some places, you don't see very much of it. For example, if you're flying over an urban area, you may mostly see buildings. In other words, you'll be seeing concrete, tile, other kinds of material, asphalt, that are covering the ground surface. If you fly over an agricultural area, you'll see fields covered by vegetation and under the vegetation, soil, which we'll discuss a bit more later. But there are some places where if you look down from the window of an airplane, you'll actually see cliffs and barren exposures in which rock is exposed. We call such exposures bedrock because the rock that they're composed of is attached to the earth underneath, and is continuous with rock all the way down to the base of the crust. As a recap, minerals are made chemically by different elements and with rocks as our topic today, these materials are made by combining one or several minerals physically and chemically. We all know that some rocks and minerals have great economic value and these are raw materials that we are using throughout the years. A basic knowledge of earth materials is therefore essential to understand most geologic phenomena like volcanic eruptions, mountain building, earthquakes, etc. Every rock contains clues about the environment in which it is formed. Thus, rocks contain a wealth of information about events that have occurred over Earth's long history. They help us to develop new technologies and are used in our everyday lives. Our use of rocks and minerals includes as building material, cosmetics, cars, roads, and appliances. One of the uses of these rocks in ancient times are used as stone tools good for hunting, like creating spears, daggers, knives and also a handy materials that is used to create and make fire. Some of these rocks also are used for writing in stone tablets and walls that describes the community in the past. More of these are used in building houses and other infrastructure. Rocks and minerals are all around us. They help us to develop new technologies and are used in our everyday lives. Our use of rocks and minerals includes as building material, cosmetics, cars, roads, and appliances. In order to maintain a healthy lifestyle and strengthen the body, humans need to consume minerals daily. Rocks and minerals play a valuable role in natural systems such as providing habitat like the cliffs at Grand Canyon National Park where endangered condors nest, or provide soil nutrients in redwood where the tallest trees in the world grow. Rocks and minerals are important for learning about earth materials, structure, and systems. Studying these natural objects incorporates an understanding of earth science, chemistry, physics, and math. Let's have an example. I have images of rocks here and let's determine their uses. Do you know some of these rocks? Have you seen one in real life? The first rock is what we call marble. Marbles are used principally for buildings and monuments, interior decoration, statuary, table tops, and novelties. Color and appearance are their most important qualities. Resistance to abrasion, which is a function of cohesion between grains as well as the hardness of the component minerals, is important for floor and stair treads. It is used for its beauty in architecture and sculpture. It is used for its chemical properties in pharmaceuticals and agriculture. 
It is used for its optical properties in cosmetics, paint, and paper. It is used because it is an abundant, low-cost commodity in crushed stone prepared for construction projects. Marble has many unique properties that make it a valuable rock in many different industries. The second rock is what we call sandstone. Sandstone is used on domestic construction and housewares even in prehistoric times. It is a popular building material from ancient times since it is relatively soft, making it easy to carve. It has been widely used around the world in constructing temples, homes, and other buildings. It has also been used for artistic purposes to create ornamental fountains and statues. Some sandstones are resistant to weathering, yet are easy to work. This makes sandstone a common building and paving material including in asphalt concrete. Because of the hardness of individual grains, uniformity of grain size and friability of their structure, some types of sandstone are excellent materials from which to make grindstones, for sharpening blades and other implements. The third one we have is a rock called slate. Most of the slate mined throughout the world is used to produce roofing slates. Slate performs well in this application because it can be cut into thin sheets, absorbs minimal moisture, and stands up well in contact with freezing water. A disadvantage is the cost of the slate and its installation in comparison with other roofing materials. As a result, in new construction slate is mainly confined to high-end projects and prestige architecture. Slate is also used for interior flooring, exterior paving, dimension stone, and decorative aggregate. Small pieces of slate are also used to make turkey calls. The photos on this page document several uses of slate. Historically slate has been used for chalkboards, student writing slates, billiard tables, cemetery markers, whetstones, and table tops. Because it is a good electrical insulator, it was also used for early electric panels and switch boxes. The fourth one is clay. The use of clay in pottery making antedates recorded human history, and pottery remains provide a record of past civilizations. As building materials, bricks baked and as adobe have been used in construction since earliest time. Impure clays may be used to make bricks, tile, and the cruder types of pottery, while kaolin, or china clay, is required for the finer grades of ceramic materials. Another major use of kaolin is as paper coating and filler, it gives the paper a gloss and increases the opacity. Refractory materials, including fire brick, chemical wear, and melting pots for glass, also make use of kaolin together with other materials that increase resistance to heat. Since ancient times, clay soil has been used for construction because of its extraordinary properties. Clay can be made into adobe bricks by drying it in the sun or by burning it as fire. Clay has the ability to be molded into different sort of shapes and structures when water is mixed to it. The last one we have is what we call granite. Granite has been in use for thousands of years as dimension stone, construction material, decorative, and architectural stone. The natural stone has also been used in bridges, paving and in multiple exterior projects. As an elegant and prestigious material, Granite is ideal for a range of interior projects. Granite is also used in buildings, bridges, paving, monuments, and many other exterior projects. Indoors, polished granite slabs and tiles are used in countertops, tile floors, stair treads and many other design elements. Granite is a prestige material, used in projects to produce impressions of elegance and quality. Rocks are of great resource value, some directly and some as constituents of minerals. Soils are derived from weathering of rocks. Almost all types of building materials used for paving roads, floors or building walls of houses come from rocks. They are a source of precious metals like gold, platinum and copper. It has an utmost economic importance to man. One is, it is a source of minerals. Some rocks are a source of a mineral such as gold, diamond, limestone and petroleum e. t. c. which can be exported to provide foreign exchange to a country, petroleum, coal, limestone and derived from sedimentary rocks while gold, diamond and tin are derived from igneous and metamorphic rocks. 
second is it is a source of fuel. Sedimentary rocks like petroleum and local are a source of fuel for domestic and industrial uses. Third is it is for construction purposes. Some rocks like granite and sandstone are quarried and used for road, bridge and building construction. Fourth is it also serves as a tourist center. Huge rock masses on the mountain serve as tourist center. Fifth is it acts as an ornamental. Some beautiful rocks such as marble can be polished as an ornament for decorating floors, walls of building, churches and tombstones. Sixth is it is a source of food nutrients. Rock salts such as sodium chloride from sedimentary rocks provide minerals used in cooking. Eight is that it is an important factor on the formation of soil. Soil are formed from the disintegration of rocks. Lastly, it is a source of metals. Rocks are source of metals which are derived from mines such as gold, iron and aluminium. Geologists study rocks because they contain clues about what the Earth was like in the past. We can assemble a historical record of a planet and trace events that occurred long before humans roamed our planet. For example, one particular area may have experienced changes as extreme as changing from a desert to a swamp to a coral reef under the sea. Different rocks form under only certain conditions and even the dullest gray lump of a rock can tell us something important about the past. By studying how the Earth and other planets worked in the past, we can better understand how they are working today. This helps us understand our effects on the environment and its potential effects on us. For example, by understanding where earthquakes have occurred in the past, we have a much better idea of where they are likely to occur in the future and can be prepared for them. Second, by gaining an understanding of how planets work, we can better predict how the Earth will react to changes. For example, if we understand how the Earth and its life responded to temperature changes in the past, we might better understand the effects of the global warming that is happening today. So the basic point is to better understand our world. This helps us to better coexist with nature and reap the benefits that it has to offer. Now we already the uses and importance of rocks. Let's now define what is a rock. Rocks are naturally formed aggregate of mineral matter constituting a significant part of the Earth's crust that can be either consolidated or non-consolidated, either monomineralic or an aggregate of mineral species, can be formed by inorganic processes but some may be biogenic in origin and identity as determined by texture and composition. There are three basic types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Extremely common in the Earth's crust, igneous rocks are volcanic and form from molten material. They include not only lava spewed from volcanoes, but also rocks like granite, which are formed by magma that solidifies far underground. Sedimentary rocks are formed from eroded fragments of other rocks or even from the remains of plants or animals. The fragments accumulate in low-lying areas like lakes, oceans, and desert and then are compressed back into rock by the weight of overlying materials. Sandstone is formed from sand, mudstone from mud, and limestone from seashells, diatoms, or bone-like minerals precipitating out of calcium-rich water. Metamorphic rocks are sedimentary or igneous rocks that have been transformed by pressure, heat, or the intrusion of fluids. The heat may come from nearby magma or hot water intruding via hot springs. It can also come from subduction, when tectonic forces draw rocks deep beneath the Earth's surface. With the definition of each respective types of rocks, these Earth materials are classified according to its texture, color, particle shape and particle size. Each of which has a different and unique characteristic since each rock has its own defining process on how it was formed. Inside the crust, rock components are slowly but constantly being changed from one form to another and the processes involved are summarized in the rock cycle. The rock cycle is driven by two forces. One is the Earth's internal heat engine, which moves material around in the core and the mantle and leads to slow but significant changes within the crust, and 
Two is the the hydrological cycle, which is the movement of water, ice, and air at the surface, and is powered by the sun. The rock cycle is still active on Earth because our core is hot enough to keep the mantle moving, our atmosphere is relatively thick, and we have liquid water. On some other planets or their satellites, such as the Moon, the rock cycle is virtually dead because the core is no longer hot enough to drive mantle convection and there is no atmosphere or liquid water. The rock cycle takes place both above and below the Earth's surface. The rock deepest beneath the Earth's surface, and under extreme heat and pressure, is metamorphic rock. This metamorphic rock can be melt and become magma. When magma cools below the Earth's surface, it becomes, intrusive igneous rock. If magma cools above the Earth's surface, it is, extrusive igneous rock, and becomes part of the outcrop. The outcrop is subject to weathering and erosion, and can be moved and redeposited around the Earth by forces such as water and wind. As the outcrop is eroded, it becomes sediment which can be buried, compacted, and cemented beneath the Earth's surface to become sedimentary rock. As sedimentary rock gets buried deeper and comes under increased heat and pressure, it returns to its original state as metamorphic rock. Rocks in the rock cycle do not always make a complete loop. It is possible for sedimentary rock to be uplifted back above the Earth's surface and for intrusive and extrusive igneous rock to be reburied and become metamorphic rock. In all of the processes mentioned on above, everything goes back with the molten rock which is called magma which is formed by melting that occurs with the Earth's crust and upper mantle. Every type of rock is designed to go back to this stage. When this magma reaches the Earth's surface via eruption or uplift, we call it lava since a magmatic body rises toward the surface because it is less dense than the surrounding rock. Eventually, this molten rock solidifies, a process called crystallization or solidification. The resulting rock then is called an igneous rock, igneous intrusive if it is formed below the Earth's surface or igneous extrusive if it is formed above the surface. These igneous rocks are then exposed by weathering agents like wind and water, they undergo weathering, disintegration and slow decomposition of rocks by the influence of weathering agents. The product of weathering which is called a sediment, the loose materials from weathering, are often moved downslope by gravity and then picked up and transported by one or more erosional agents like wind, water, and ice through the process of erosion. These particles are eventually deposited in low-lying areas like in the floodplains for example. These deposited sediments undergo lithification, a process to convert sediments into a sedimentary rock. The sediments are being compacted by the weight of the overlying materials and it is being cemented by chemical fluids that fills up the pores with mineral matter thus forming sedimentary rocks. If these sedimentary rock structure becomes deeply buried and being subjected by great pressure and heat, it may react to form metamorphic rocks. And if these metamorphic rocks are being subjected again to high temperature it will eventually melt, creating a magma and the process will start all over again. As I mentioned earlier, geologists divide all rocks into basically three simple categories, based on how they form. Igneous rocks. These rocks are formed from the cooling and crystallization of magma or molten rock. Sedimentary rocks. These rocks are formed when weathered fragments of other rocks are buried, compressed, and cemented together, or when minerals precipitate directly from solution. Metamorphic rocks. These are formed by alteration due to heat, pressure, or chemical action of a pre-existing igneous or sedimentary rock. It kinda sounds like metamorphism for a good reason. The root of the word means to change and metamorphic rocks are rocks that are formed by changing pre-existing rocks. That wraps up the discussion on the overview of rocks. Next meeting we will be dealing with each different types and let's go dig deeper so that we will know what do these rocks look like and how does it feel to be one. Thank you for listening and see you on our next discussion.